Hey guys, welcome back. BGC Care here. We're back with our weekly recap of all things injustice. This is for the week of July 15th, 2021. The current character challenge is Flashpoint Batman. That is a one week repeat, as it always is now. Uh, no new characters. Uh, the required characters for that are Catwoman, Nightwing, and Joker, who you can get at bronze, bronze, and silver. So, you know, uh, if you're at the point where you can actually comfortably beat the challenge, you probably have all these right. characters or right. the money to pretty easily get them. Yeah. Uh, his passive is Dark Justice, which is Batman's special attacks to turn off all aspects of healing. And Flashpoint characters on Batman's team have a chance to deal increased crit damage. Uh, previously, it was Flashpoint characters on Batman's team gain quote, destructive blows. Right. So he's got 1,500 attack and 1,300 health. He was last available in September of 2020. Yeah, and he was the early access pack last week. It's a big clue, but there actually have been a number of times where he was offered in the access pack and it was a different Batman that was the challenge. So it's good that he showed up. Uh, he's got really top tier high stats there into their unbalanced a little bit with more in the damage, which is exactly what we like. Mm -hmm. um, and he is the absolute reason why a full flashpoint team is so good because it doubles the damage from critical hits. Mm -hmm. um, maybe a little bit, I, well, I won't say everybody underappreciated, but I used to underappreciate the turning off all aspects of healing because let's face it, right? Just that he's got two elements to his, um, passive you could almost call it three if you were saying that he boosts his own crit damage and he boosts his teammate crit damage yeah but that boosted crit damage would be enough um you don't need anything else but the fact is that it it works that um all aspects of healing raven's health swap counts as healing mm -hmm. so it's pretty cool it um uh, containment doomsday counts too he's got yeah, a bunch directions of, right so it's really cool. Yeah, it's it's better than a lot of other abilities that only work on some aspects of healing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's so th they don't say it in the description, but it isn't 100%. There's only a chance. It doesn't always happen. Um, but it doesn't matter if specials are dodged or specials are blocked. Either triggers or it doesn't, no matter what the opponent does. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, the main counter against this... Flashpoint Batman or the Flashpoint team is Red Sun Green Lantern, which negates um, any critical hits. But, you know, let's face it, that team is tough against anyone. Like, it doesn't matter what the team is. When you remove critical hits, whether you're removing a, the doubled critical hits, mm -hmm. like on Batman or whatever number you're getting regularly, it's just, you know, it's just tough. Yeah, obviously, you know, it's harder against somebody who's got boosted crit stuff than somebody who's got basic damage. Yeah. Uh, or other gear that just boosts damage and not rely on crits. But, you know, everybody should ideally have a balance of both. Right. So it should hit pretty much any team. Yep. Uh, 17th in a row that matches a pattern that was originally from May 2020. If it follows a pattern, next week is supposed to be John Stewart Green Lantern. Yeah, but we'll talk about that more later. Right. Might not be. Uh, this week's multiplayer reward is the reward, right? Yeah. It's the totem, which becomes Tantu Totem. And the effects are 30% crit chance on specials, 35% of maximum power on Tagen, restore 100% power for special if enemy was KO'd with it, and the evolved ability, which is get 100% power back from special if enemy took no damage. It was last available in December of 2020. So uh, we're more than half a year into our uh, uninterrupted pattern, and what comes next week is actually interesting. Right, because the last... so. What comes next week is potentially either uh, the Mysterious Artifact, which becomes Ibistic, if it's the most recent version of the cycle. Mm -hmm. However, it could also be the Alien Artifact, which becomes Mother Box, if it's the original version where it was uninterrupted for, I don't know, like more than a year. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, out of the blue, Mother Box became, what was supposed to be there and it became Ibistic. Yeah, so we don't know exactly what that's going to look like. It's possible that... You know, my guess uh, for what would make the most sense to me is if Mother Box was next week and then the week after that was Ibistick and there was just some weird thing when they stitched it together. No, but Ibistick has its own slot oh, on the schedule. True. 
All they did was just swap it out. It didn't actually no. do anything last time. So, anyways, it, I don't know. We'll this see. is why this is such an interesting week, right? Because um, this, and we'll get to the rest of it later, but we, we have to talk about Tentu Torum, only because it is currently the single most important piece of gear when it was released. It was the absolute most important piece of gear, um, and unequivocally, right? Like gears. Sometimes you can say, well, maybe this is a little better. Maybe that's a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Um, there is nothing more important than Tantu Totem. So grab it if you can. Not only did it shift the game from basic damage to specials, it changed how specials were managed and how you treated specials, right? So in the game, it used to be, you do basic damage and every once in a while, if you, you toughed it out long enough, you'd get the power to do a special, which would do way more damage than the basics. And that was sort of the equalizer. And before Tantu Totem, when you had, um, specials and you could do splash damage if you were doing a special two even if it took you a long time to get it um you wanted to maximize your splash damage even if it meant giving up a bit of damage to the opponent in front of you just to do more splash damage right Mm -hmm. so you just wanted to maximize your number and you didn't want to waste any damage on an individual character you didn't want to deal more damage than their full health well yeah it it didn't it didn't help you. Well, so let's say you had the fourth world godly mace and you did 15% splash damage for special two. That was as good as basically a 30% damage boost because you're spreading it onto your other opponents, right? Mm-hmm. So you're giving 15% to the other guy and 50% to the other guy and just, you know, guy yeah. right in front of you. If it meant that you could boost it by that much, you were willing to give up a little bit of damage in front of you yeah. with that slot, even if you didn't knock them out because you're just doing overall more damage. Mm-hmm. Um, Tanty Totem changed that because your priority isn't doing splash damage. Your priority, and it's great if you can do a ton of it, but your priority really is um, knocking out the person in front of you to make sure you get all your power back. Yeah, you, overkill actually becomes really valuable because it's insurance. Yeah, yeah. Um, so crit chance on all specials is great um, because most gears, it's only crit chance on special one or special two. Um, when you max it out, you get one full bar of power on tag in which is part of what makes it so great because you generate power faster. Mm -hmm. Uh, Getting full power if you knock out the opponent is also really good because you're just doing it over and over, like we said. Um, And getting full power back if the enemy takes no damage means that is the counter potentially to Astro Harness. Well, yeah, because before it came out, there was sort of... You could plan around and make people who did things like Blink or Avoid Specials. You could set it up so that Specials weren't a consistent, guaranteeable source of damage, and the only way to guarantee damage was using basic damage, right? Right, right. But uh, after Tantu Totem, it sort of invalidated, if you had it, anything that avoided taking damage because, you know, you could use your special for free. You didn't have to think about whether or not your special was going to land. Right. It pretty much always made sense to use a special, and the only real time is if it was going to do a multi-hit and you're really close to, like, triggering yeah. uh, Tantu Totem. Or not, sorry, Astro Harness. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, really, like, it's, it's great on anybody. It's a huge amount of power. You generate it fast. You keep it a long time. And... We illustrate this perfectly every week with our Phantom Zone team where we have New 52 Wonder Woman where, especially if she faces Astro Harness, she's generating a ton of power. Mm -hmm. Um, And so what it does is it's changed the game so that the characters who had a passive that relied on power, like New 52 Wonder Woman, become real movers Mm -hmm. when when you've got Tanty Storm. When it doesn't, she doesn't generate enough power to make enough difference. You can hold on to power and spend it at the same time, yeah. which is really great. And anything that relies on spending power, you can spend the same power over and over again. Yeah, It's like, you know, putting your coin into the vending machine, but having right. a piece of thread on it so you can yeah. pull it back when you're done. Yeah. When, when, that in, when that Justice League team plays well and you knock out the first three, what you see is that her teammates have three bars of power and have not even tagged in. Yeah. That's powerful. That's, mm. that's really ridiculous. Three bars of power in almost no time, too. Right, right. Yeah. So there we go. Uh, in the store, we have the Arkham Pack 1 for $24.99. Uh, it comes with three random gold cards in the Arkham series. Uh, and so the ones that it tells you about is uh, there's a 10% chance for all of these. Arkham Knight Batman, Arkham Knight Catwoman, Arkham Knight Arkham Knight, Arkham Origins Bane, Arkham Origins Batman, and Arkham Origins Joker. So those are the six that it tells you about where you get a 10% chance of each. And then it tells you that there's a 40% chance of getting a gold character. Right. But what's interesting about the description is um, in that list of characters, the description um, 
we can already see it's got Arkham Knight and Arkham Knight Batman. It mentions Arkham Knight Harley Quinn, which it doesn't list in the percentages. So that's going to be one of your other 40% gold characters. So here's the interesting thing. There are five other unlisted um, Arkham characters as far as the percentages go. So that 40% could be any of Arkham Origins Deathstroke, uh, Arkham Harley Quinn, Arkham Knight Harley Quinn. Um, and based on our previous pack openings, when this pack used to be power credits, mm-hmm. those are it for those that last 40%. However, we're missing Arkham Killer Croc. We're missing Arkham Knight Batgirl. And because it's money, there's no way we're testing this the same way. But if um, if it's still the same, then you're still missing two um, Arkham characters. Mm-hmm. And that means the three unnamed characters... I mean, it technically it's unnamed. It says Arkham Har- Knight Harley Quinn in the description, but not in percentages. So those ones are actually slightly higher percentage, or at least one of them is a higher percentage a likelihood. Um, than the really good ones that they've listed, which to me, I think um, Arkham Knight Batman, Arkham Knight Catwoman, and Arkham Knight Harley Quinn actually are probably my favorites out of the Arkham team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there we go. Uh, And, you know, not worth it, right? It's a lot of money. Yeah. Oh, and interesting too, the last time Flashpoint Batman was a challenge, it was actually the Arkham Asylum pack, which is the one that only gives you uh, Arkham Knight Origins Batman, Arkham Origins Deathstroke, and Arkham uh, not Arkham, just regular Arkham Harley Quinn. Mm -hmm. Um... And so it's 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 actually another big change in if you're paying attention to what's been happening. Yeah, we've said the word Arkham too many times. Arkham, Arkham, Arkham. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the next thing in the store uh, of note is the Joker Celebration Pack uh, for 300 Nth Metal. It's the third Celebration Pack in a row. It contains one gold or Nth Metal character and some cards. You get a 5% chance of getting the metal, the Batman Who Laughs, which is, you know, the Joker. And then there's a seven and a half chance of getting all of Arkham Origins Joker, Batman Ninja Lord Joker, Insurgency Joker, Suicide Squad Joker Unhinged, or Killing Joke Joker. And then it says a 57.5% chance of just getting a gold yeah. character. Yeah. Whatever yeah. that means. Probably some Jokers in there, but... Yeah. It can't th- be that great. Yeah. I mean, not worth mentioning, clearly. Hmm. And we also have... And this is what's interesting and why we're talking about sort of cycles being broken a lot this week, potentially, right. is we have the Rebirth Jessica Cruz Challenge Pack for 200,000 credits. So as always, it's the extra chance, 6.16% chance is it a 2.86% chance of getting the card. What's important is that this is usually what we use as our hint for what the next week's challenge is with a pretty high percent chance. Right. Uh, and this differs from what our prediction would be if it's following the pattern that we've been following right. for the past, you know, right. more than a dozen weeks. Because right. it should be John Stewart. John Stewart Green Lantern is who we're expecting right. and if the it, pattern. If it was, then the next one would be Earth 2 Flash. Mm-hmm. So then this is going to be a defining moment for both the this uh, the challenge plus the multiplayer. Yeah, um, so or... next week, no matter what, we're going to get something kind of unexpected. Right. And the question is whether it's the you know the pattern that we're used to or yeah. the the what's cued by this pack. Right. Uh, so our survivor is LexCore gear until the twentieth of July. Phantom Zone is finished. We made mistake. I made a mistake last week. It was uh, one week instead of two weeks, like it usually is. So I don't know if that means anything either. Uh, Fight sixty two is still broken. Uh, last weekend's breakthrough was as expected Zod, Aquaman, and Shazam. So this coming weekend's is probably Catwoman, Deathstroke, and Raven. Mm-hmm. Link in the description to a complete Reddit thread from Devlin16 that goes over a, the whole breakthrough cycle. And yep. it's been pretty good for a while. Yeah, so in terms of glitches, nothing's changed this week. We're going to go pretty fast. Yeah, I, I, I mean, we've overstayed our welcome a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, so tutorials for all the current working ones in the top right corner of this video. Uh, in terms of stuff that you want to do that you can't, Nothing for credits that we're willing to endorse. We talk about it in a video that we'll link in the description why. Uh, you can't get repeated path multiplayer season rewards. You can't exploit a glitch for early multiplayer season rewards. You can get it, but it's kind of crummy. Uh, there's nothing to get through the Phantom Zone super naturally quickly. Uh, you can't skip watching a video and just get the free energy without watching the video. Yeah. And maybe I'm not going to go over too much detail about the ones that work because the challenge reset method we've confirmed on this week's Flashpoint, same uh, concerns apply. Mm-hmm. Uh, tips in the description for challenge reset for Android 10 and for uh, iOS devices. Mm-hmm. Um, breakthrough glitch still working. Airplane mode glitch is still working. Time shifting still works. Make sure you bring your clock back to normal before you're done. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Yeah. So to finish up this week, as always, we've got to thank our lovely supporters on Patreon. 
And that would be Victor Gomez, Consul Peasant, and Ed Woon, supporting us at the top tier last word. Cinemac and Mohammed Al Shady at the Your Message Here tier. Sean Farrell, Daniel Simonson, Aaron Mall, Michael DeVries, Brandon C., Irvin Ruiz, and Eddie Dew at the credited level. And Chris Wolf, Scarlett Danny, Awesome Gamer 2 for 1, Pav URS, Gavin Malat, and Isfar E at the gratitude level. Thank you so much for your support, and we'll see you next time. Komoda. Komoda.